Bob Ellis and the name of my book is Kisus Kamkamos and the White Warrior. The book, in a literal sense, uh, is about a young Indian who, after discovering the body of a friend, um, goes on a journey to discover how and why it happened. Um, but in a wider context, the journey is about how we try and make sense of, of a changing, a rapidly changing world. Um, as a reader, I think it's important to understand that you're making the journey with Kisus Kamkamos uh, and that the unexplainable things that happen to him, uh, and of which there are many in this book, um, and occur on the journey, are described in a way that Kisus Kamkamos perceives them himself, how he understands them, hence that kind of unexplainability. Um, it's a way of trying to convey the confusion and the uncertainty that Kisus Kamkamos, uh, Kamkamos uh, experiences on his journey. Um, when I'm writing a book, I don't have a hard and fast strategy. So in terms of what comes first, the, 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 the character or the plot, um, it, it changes from story to story. Um, to give you an example, um, I wrote a story a couple of years ago um, set in the First World War and the Gallipoli campaign. Um, now, I worked in an office many years ago and I came across a name of a, of a client um, I can't really say for, for um, purposes of um, um, privacy and data protection, I suppose. Um, I, I, just, I was fascinated by this particular name. It's a very unusual name. And I thought I'd love to put him in a story one day. And some, I, I, it's probably about 12, 15 years later, I used that name and developed the story around him. Um, however, um, I've also developed stories around the plot, so I'm currently working on a, on a crime thriller um, <clears throat> for my own entertainment more than anything else, um, and it's set around uh, the time of uh, the 9-11 terror attacks in New York, um, and the, the idea of a plot came to me before uh, a character, uh, and actually the way I've developed the character, he seems to grow along with the story. So um, what I mean by that is that um, he's developing and growing all the time, both as a character and in my imagination. Um, but no, there's no hard and fast rule that I stick to. Sometimes I don't even have uh, an idea of a plot or, or a person. It's just I, I sit down and I like to write. I love to write. In many ways I need to write. And I'll just sit at the keyboard and just start tapping out sentences until something happens. Um, I know some people do have structures, and, and I suppose if, if I do have a structure, it would be once an idea comes to me, um, it's, it's about then sketching out um, a fuller plan, if you like, putting the bones down of a skeleton around which the flesh I can attach being the, the, the meat of the story. Um, but um, yeah, the short answer is I don't really have um, any particular stru set structure for writing. I think the most difficult part of writing for me, uh, in my experience at least, is, uh, is getting the, the beginning right. Um, to me, the beginning is absolutely crucial and it's that moment in a story at which the reader will either go, I want to read this or I'm bored by this or so on and so forth. So I think in terms of its importance then there needs to be something there in the beginning that really captures the imagination. And I've sat in many stories uh, that I've written, I've laboured over the beginning, time changed it and changed it and changed it, and relatively speaking, the rest of the story is a lot easier to write. Um, and I think, you know, the, the, uh, another thing I find difficult is, is when you do experience those times of writer's block, the so-called curse of the writer's block, where you, um, there's nothing. Um, and everybody gets it, um, at least I think everybody, every writer gets it. Um, <clears throat> it's frustrating, but over the years I've learned to deal with that, whereas in the past I've, I've just sat and I've forced myself to write, and sometimes it doesn't happen at all. 
Whereas these days, if I if I get to that point at which um, you, you know the flow is just really staggered and staccato, I uh, I <laughs> metaphorically put the pen down and I stop and put it away, and I can actually put the work away for for quite a period of time until I feel right and ready to go back to this now. Um, but uh, my advice in these situations, personally speaking, is that you really do have to stop. Um, some people just work on through it, and, and you know, but, but I find that so frustrating. It's like banging your head against that metaphorical brick wall, and it's um, and it for me personally serves very little to no purpose. So, um, take a break, righteous block, take a break. Um, the characters in my book, um, in Kisu's Kamkamos and the White Warrior. Are they similar to me? No. no, not in any way, shape or form. He's um, the character is entirely a work of fiction, somebody I've completely made up. Um, you know, I, I, I think I've spoken before about as I'm writing, I try and posit myself, put myself in the position of the person experiencing what they're experiencing. And, um, and quite frankly, I, I, um, I'm not that person <laughs> in a nutshell. I, I'm far more at home uh, sitting in front of the TV watching the world as opposed to participating in it. Um, so, but other stories as well, it, likewise, uh, whether they're crime fiction, children's stories, um, uh, the war story uh, uh, around Gallipoli, and uh, I've written various types and genres of story, and, and none of the characters in those have uh, bore, borne any resemblance to me uh, as a person. Pure fiction. If one of my characters should materialise, what would I say to them? Um, it's an interesting question, and, and with with um, reference to Kisu's Kamakamos, um, I think I would ask him um, what what life is actually like. What was life actually like? Um, living as a native, as an indigenous person, Native American. Uh, in this era, in this period, um, I'd also like to get some kind of confirmation or affirmation that my research has been uh, reasonably well carried out. And that, um, so if I said to him, you know, have I got this right? And he said, yes, I'd be a happy buddy. But um, yeah, that that's the conversation I would like to have with him. Um, I think the essential characteristics of a hero uh, that they have a strong moral core, a, a very, very certain idea of right and wrong. I, uh, personally, I don't think a hero has to be likable. Um, they can be, the, you know, uh, uh, as the phrase goes, or the term goes, uh, uh, an anti-hero. Um, they can be violent, they can be this, that and other, other traits that might appear um, to make them not a hero at all. But above all else i would just definitely say they would have to have this unshakable certainty about what is right and what is wrong morally speaking ethically speaking when i said about writing kisus kam kamos and the white warrior um in terms of the setting um i decided on that that period of first contact largely because there's not a huge amount known, um, and certainly in, in documented form, uh, about that period. So, so it just fascinated me, the idea of, of one, of a person um, uh, discovering uh, a civilization and a culture that's so different to theirs. What would their, what would their reaction be? What, what, what was the experience like? Um, over the years, I've done plenty of research, personally and um, um, as part of my academic studies, on Native America uh, and the indigenous peoples of the Americas. Um, I just thought there's well, in the first instance, it fascinated me, and I think that's probably the, the main reason. And secondly, there's not a huge amount written currently on on first contact. Um, and to combine that with that kind of um, that native tradition, uh, the, the oral storytelling tradition, um, and to, to 
draw in elements of, of, of that history into a story of First Contact, um, I thought would be just um, interesting for me personally and hopefully for, for readers as well. Um, I think uh, recent books, the Fifty Shades of Grey, that would be my choice. I, I um, hope I don't get sued for this, but I, I personally didn't think it was very well written at all. Uh, I think it was more the subject matter that was um, was uh, what what possibly caught the publisher's eye. But um, anyway, not to go into too much. Fifty Shades of Grey, that's my answer. That's the book I would rewrite uh, in an improved way. Um, literary success, what would it mean to me? Um, well, not financial success. I, 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 um, I write because I love writing. It, it's as simple as that. And in fact, um, I, I have been writing for the best part of um, probably about 30 odd years. Um, and it's only very recently that I've even put things forward for publication. And that wasn't my decision necessarily. That was my partner's um, pushing, if you ever want to put better description um, so yeah my, my uh, that that would be my uh, literary success for me would be um, acceptance acknowledgement um, and as I say financial reward comes a very distant third fourth or fifth I would say I've recently completed a prequel to Kisus Kavkamos and the White Warrior it's a book called Usimisol and the Thunderbird, and the story tells of two young boys that go in search of um, the fabled Thunderbird. Um, it's a book that's aimed at a slightly younger age range, I would say 9 to 12, uh, and it's written in a far more episodic way. Um, and by that I mean it follows a, a linear narrative from beginning to end, however each chapter is, is a self-contained story in itself. Um, it really taps into, once again, um, native culture, native uh, traditional oral storytelling. Um, and many of the stories are rooted in not just Passamaquoddy uh, Indian tales, but uh, kind of a Pan-American Indian um, narrative, for want of a better description. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the Thunderbird, the Thunderbird is a key element of, of Native American culture. Um, at the heart of that culture is animal symbolism uh, and the the Thunderbird is held in very high reverence. It's a spirit bird um, and considered um, very sacred by, if not all, very many of the indigenous peoples of the Americas. Um, as I say, it's recently completed this, this, uh, this short novel and hopefully that'll be on release in the not too distant future.